Okay, um, I've asked this uh, lovely question on um, uh, money and my, my, uh, spirituality and money, my view on it. Um, money is one of those things, um, I, I just feel inspired at the moment to uh, say a few things. Uh, one is I'm in a, a well, I'll share some stuff actually, it might be useful to some, some people. But uh, I remember once I was working uh, a 12-step program related to food and uh, and I was giving service in that fellowship and my, and giving service in that uh, and I, I would say the symbolic thing was I destroyed my health with food you know kidney failure and everything and as I was trying to be helpful and giving to others with food problems um, you know miracles and miracles and I was doing the course of miracles and studying Hawkins lots of miracles happened and eventually um, uh, the um, the gout I had, you know, I was discharged from the rheumatology clinic, um, discharged from the asthma clinic, and I remember once I was helping seven people in that food fellowship, and someone asked me, "Will you help me?" And uh, as well, and I said yes, and that was the eighth person. And then the next day, or more or less the next day, in the nights, the hospital rang me up and said, "Oh, we've got a kidney transplant for you, so you can come in and get your kidney." about 2 a.m. in the middle of the night. So I got my kidney and then all my health problems just evaporated from, you know, a place of absolute <clears throat> organ failure, really horrific place. So I found as I gave, and also this, the idea of, of I, ne I needed to, I needed to help. I needed to show um, love and service to the universe. I sort of see it as karmic clearing through the uh, destruction of my own health. I had created a lot of suffering to everyone, my parents, my family, also the, the country and my productivity. Um, so every, everyone suffered because I was destroying myself, my health. So anyway, as I gave service in that fellowship uh, for those uh, people with food problems, all my health problems disappeared. And then, and I was on benefits at the time, uh, and then suddenly my health was perfect and I, and I and then, you know, the right thing to do was to let go of the benefits. And now I hadn't been working, you know, I'd been used to them. So I went, I, I knew then I needed intuitively, I've created a lot of destruction in the universe through being financially uh, unmanageable. So um, intuitively, I knew with that, um, uh, I need to give service to those and learn how to give service and recover uh, to people who have now got money problems. And uh, so I went into a money related fellowship and I, more or less I was sitting there um, and now it was the thing of money and, and career were the things that were now burning. Now my health was the big issue. And now I sort of tried, I saw that karmically I had destroyed my health and created suffering in the universe to my family, to the society by that. So I, by giving back in that area specifically, um, my health and addiction around food uh, stopped. And so I knew now the universe was saying, hey, you're still got a lot of severe financial problems and, and you're in fear. And I knew um, from Hawkins that if I resonate with fear, I have to go from the resonance of fear around any issue. Like I had fear with food and health and that got resolved through doing the Course of Miracles and a food fellowship. Uh, so health and food was fine. And now I started to have fear. It was the next layer up. It's like going up the chakras. It's like going up your energy as you're sort of spiritually growing and mastering different aspects of, 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 of um, this karmic existence. So next up was uh, money. And you know, I, went, I was in the stock market. I had a lot of baggage around money. But as soon as I went into this thing, my intention was to... Uh, draw on the energy of those in the, in those money fellowships and give back and I knew I had something to share and I just gave and it was just mystical really because as I entered that thing of wanting to release and give to the universe uh, then um, in that fellowship I remember um, within a few weeks of, of being in that in that environment of trying to be helpful to other people with money problems and receiving help from others uh, who've had money problems. Um, within a few weeks, mystically, both my parents said um, to me, we're gonna 
put our wills in your name and they'd never done that before so they energetically sensed i was finally taking responsibility around money and they trusted me and that mystically just happened as i started to have this new attitude and to become aware of my fears and give service to the universe i, I sort of see everything that i suffer with is a karmic thing that i've done to others so in order to undo it like with the anti-karma prayer you know i pray for forgiveness for the one in me who's created financial unmanageability and pain to others through my dysfunctional limited beliefs and actions and addictions around money so i knew i've got to i've got to i've got to let that go and be helpful to others sort of like the universe will as i mop up my damage to the universe the oneness that i'm connected to everyone and everyone is connected to me and if i take then in order to redress the balance i need to repair uh, the unforgiveness the un unresolved baggage of suffering i mean on a mystical level there is no difference between me and you but in separation we're all one so we're all connected and so to inflict harm on myself is to inflict harm on you and the world and for anyone to inflict anyone who goes into the light and releases their wounds it's also a blessing to everyone and to them so i did that and so that thing and then a couple of ladies asked me in that group i would i just thought you know i was sharing about wanting to um be in the spiritual field and to to lay and the idea came to me it was inspired to write a book and two ladies came and asked to um sort of uh we call them action buddies, support buddies. And one of them was an author, and the other one uh, um, was a a um, ex journalist editor. And uh, you know, I didn't I didn't go. These two people approached me, and suddenly it was like the universe was saying, "Hey, uh, help others, and also uh, uh, we're going to give you guidance on what you should be doing." You know, writing a book um, and inspiring others with what's been given which was mainly through Hawkins and fellowships and ACIM. So that was really, really exciting. And it seems like as I released that, that layer around money and I was willing to, to give, I mean, you know, there is a lot of self-help books about, you know, first give and then you receive. But um, my thing is like, you know, um, if I am suffering in an area, it's because I've wounded myself and others in that area. So to redress the... Uh, to get back to, you know, cancelling my beliefs and serving others in this area. But uh, in that way, then mystically that, you know, that limiting beliefs in me of inflicting damage on myself and others from a limited perspective of lack or insecurity or greed or fear or whatever it is, and the pride or whatever it is, as I, as I give and release those limiting ideas, or, or uh, the defects of ego, then um, automatically it's like, and as I give uh, before I receive, you know, automatically that was um, resolved. Just recently, I just want to, you know, I often share about using the Course in Miracle lessons in this group. And uh, I still have financial stuff, you know, I still get stuff with that. But um, just want to end on this with, um, uh, no, not end on this, very quickly. Um, yeah, so I, I mean, I did share it in, in this group before, but um, uh, yeah, we had, uh, my father wanted to sell his uh, be, uh, his property, one of his properties, and um, and I was fed up with this property, had one problem after the other, and, uh, and we had a buyer at the full price my father wanted. And I was worried that the buyer might not accept the uh, go through, but I prayed nonstop. And why did I pray around pray for the buyer, the solicitors, for my father, so heavily four hours a day. And, and that's the mystical thing of karma. So I think you can also transcend negative karma through vigorous prayer and counseling and using the course lessons. So I did that and um, four hours a day. And the idea is, you know, if I hold any fear or limitation around a situation in my life, then I'm blocking that infinite abundance of the love of God in my life. So I have to eradicate my fear at 100% and have only love. I mean, probably I sort of see it like every character that shows up in my life and gives me difficulty or, 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 or grace, but in difficulty, I probably met them in a past life. And so they're, they're back for a kind of like 
you know, you, I, you know, they're sort of coming back in this lifetime to say, hey, uh, you don't remember me, but I'm back. And, uh, you know, you, 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 I mean, remember you were that horrible roofer that, that didn't really fix my roof and took my money. Well, you know, I'm back. In your <laughs> so it's like they are, um, they are, um, they are here to help me to transcend errors I've made in the past. And so take the opportunity, resolve it for, oh no, sorry, four hours a day of prayer, because I knew there was some heavy stuff going on there. I could feel it from in myself and just in the situation. And then suddenly after four days of no response from them, they said, yes, we'll take it at full price. Everything's fine. So there's that. The thing with, I mean, there's a lot of stuff on law of attraction and vibration. Here's the thing, you know, if, um, I think if you have a motive that you want to manipulate the universe to get what you want, I think that can work. Um, so let's say, uh, um, uh, you know, and what you hold in mind does tend to manifest. But if I was like, if my general level of consciousness and, and wellness, I have a general level of consciousness, like let's say my main resonance is I, I'm in fear and lack and sort of uh, negative thinking around fear and my perception. That's my, if that's my consciousness because I'm still in this kind of fear brace lack thing. And then I suddenly read a book and then I just sit on a cushion for an hour every day and picture a Lamborghini and picture, um, picture driving happily in that Lamborghini every day. That Lamborghini for me may come but it's not going to be very fulfilling because my general vibration is, is quite bad. So I'm just trying to, uh, so generally thing, things tend to come faster. Um, this is the, the, the um, I, I think this was the thing. And the Heisenberg principle in science is that when you witness something, when scientists witness something, it can change phenomena from waves to particles. However, I mean, Hawking said this really interesting thing. So just the observer on an event out there has intrinsic power to change it by not observing it. So, but what happens if a saint observes something or Jesus or Buddha observes something, if a scientist observes something and a raving addict observes something or wants something? Well, you know, whatever someone at a high level of consciousness, because the power and light that comes through with an intention is so vast that, you know, they can hold a thought in mind and that thing will often materialize. Like, for example, say Mother Teresa, love and service. Um, and, um, you know, like someone can just wander in her presence with cancer, not say anything, and then leave her presence. And then suddenly that cancer has disappeared on the x-ray. So the, the emission of that love and light into the world through the inner vibration is transformative all the time. Whereas, you know, just being not completely surrendering all areas means that one can be in lower vibrations. Uh, so, I mean, but, but with money, it's like, if you've got money problems and it's urgent, then I would say, um, uh, cancel what are the beliefs or surrender whatever it is you're holding in mind i'm feared i won't have enough money for rent i'm fear this person won't pay me and you've got to clear it you've got to transcend it until there's nothing there so keep praying for them yourself letting go of the situation into god's hands and uh do it as if you're in pain then do it until you're not in pain and generally my experience is there will be a huge miracle coming but not, not having the attitude of trying to control the universe, you know, just surrender the fear and the limitation and let come, let come whatever comes or don't have an expectation of time. Like this attitude of I'm going to be, a, I'm going to, I'm going to pray and do visualization and I want God to give me a Ferrari in two days time, I think uh, has its downfall because it's bargaining or wanting to manipulate the universe to get what the limited ego wants. So. I'm not saying those things won't work, but, um, you know, it's a bit like addiction. If you really, really want, if I really wanted a donut, I could probably get a donut. But for how long will that be satisfying? Uh, and how long will that be a sustainable solution? Okay, so I'm going to stop on that and hit this. Let me hit this.